If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, the Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, today's guest is Maria Leah Melandrino. She'll be on with us here shortly. She's an illustrator, story artist, and I want to say somewhat Wheel of Time fandom famous at this point for her Watt Chibis. Can't wait to talk about those with her and look forward to speaking to her about her career and her work and Wheel of Time in general. Now, before we bring her on, I want to remind you, we have a little special one-year celebration coming up on Watt Wednesday. Yes, this Wednesday morning, we're premiering Winter Dragon the often much maligned Wheel of Time TV pilot that came out five years ago, Taylor and I decided we'd take a stab at it and did what we call the Dusty Wheel Cut of Winter Dragon. We're going to premiere that on, at 11 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday morning, and then that night, our normal live show, will discuss the cut and our September announcements for upcoming episodes and guests. So yeah, can't wait until Watt Wednesday. Now, uh, that being said... Let me welcome to the show our guest today, Maria Leah Melandrino. Hey, Maria, how you doing? Hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did that. Bumped into my... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was awesome. I love, okay, that, you so, like, yeah, I, I love I, that you went for the double-handed uh, wave. That was, yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's like hands, <laughs> whatever. I'm awkward, so yeah. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So how are you this evening out in Italy, right? You're out in Italy? Yeah. Um, very good. There's actually a storm going on. So if, you know, if I disappear, it's because my internet has gone down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to hopefully. know. That's good to know. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully Zoom will, uh, the Zoom gods will, will uh, bless us this evening, you know. So I, I got to know your work first. You know, I saw the Watt Chibis. That's, uh, for those of you that haven't seen these before, we're going to show you some during the show. And you can go follow Maria's account on Twitter and also on Instagram, you can see that in the description and you can go see what we're talking about. But I, I, I thought we'd jump in there, have this discussion. You're like, how did this get started? Like, when did you decide I'm gonna create a Watt Chibi? Um, I think it actually like happens sometime. Actually, I made like um, the Two Rivers Babes, as I call them, uh, two years ago um, <laughs> in a form that was kind of different from the Chibis that I do now. Like they were Chibis, but they were a slightly different style. And then last year, I think exactly one year ago, um, I remade them uh, in a sort of slightly different um, chibi style. Yeah. And um, I did it because I think for me, it's like, it's really relaxing. Um, like it's a style, it's like, it's super fun. I get to um, take sort of like the 
most extreme characteristics of these characters and and push them you know so like you know yeah. Nynaeve has got a big braid but like in the chibi form she's got like a really long braid and um <laughs> and I think you can also get like the the personality of the character more um and it takes me much less time than doing like a full-blown illustration so for my plan of like conquering the world through chibis I think it's best because you know it takes me less time to do one basically yeah no I, I, let's let's show everyone the i like that you call them like the, basically the edmunds field you know five here let's yeah. uh, let's do this first one i love these uh, uh you know these well you can't see these on your screen but everyone that's viewing can you can see i, I like what you said was all the characteristics what is it you wanted to pull out of the character like parents chibi there what did you want to really communicate with people with that one so I think for me, Perrin is like, I mean, he's like a really tortured character, right? So like he's, he doesn't want to be there, but he's so, um, he's, he's so dutiful in his, you know, in his role that he, he, he kind of feels like he has to. So I think like in that, chi in that chibi, I wanted to convey this sort of like tortured, um, I'm feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders sort of feeling. And they are big shoulders as well. So I like yeah, the I fact that in chibis, you can... Um, even though they're all kind of similar in terms of dimensions and proportions, you can still sort of play around. So like Rand is visibly taller than the others and yeah. Perrin is visibly wider, even though, again, it's just, you know, small little puppet figures, basically. Yeah, I know they're great. I, and, I, and I love the Nynaeve's uh, braid. You're right. I hadn't noticed just how significant it was. Yeah, like, I mean, I'd like seen it. Yeah. The whole <laughs> <It's, night. laughs> like, what's funny is that I'd seen it before and I was like, yeah, that's naive. And I had kind of just looked away, but now staring at it, it's like, oh yeah, you really pulled that out. I, I love that. I, I love watching chat. For those of you that are again here with us over Twitter and Facebook, you can come over and enjoy live chat on YouTube. I try to bring in some of the questions and comments from fans, but you can, uh, yeah, you, as you're watching fans here in chat, you can kind of see just, <laughs> just how fun and adorable uh, everyone considers these to be. Now you also have done The Forsaken, which is, yeah. which is which is extremely I just, uh, fun. I just published the the last sort of part of the Forsaken, which are divided in three parts because there's actually like a ton of them. I mean, I didn't realize <laughs> right, right, also right. because like the I mean, Aginor and Balthamiel, they're like kind of pointless, really. And um, <laughs> so Balthamiel, I actually did in Arangar version because I think she's funnier. Like she's the funniest, honestly. Like she's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, let's, uh, th let's, th let's throw those up so everyone can see them. Uh, there's the first, uh, I'm showing everyone the first two sets and then we'll show okay. the third. Yeah, and I'm gonna give them a second to look here. Uh, of, I mean, Arangar, was that your favorite of the first two sets or do you have a favorite of the first two sets that you did? Um, okay, now I'm trying to think from memory. Um, I think I really like Samael because yeah. he's like, he's literally <laughs> like, he's so pissed, you know? <laughs> he's yeah. like, Oh my god, I've lost again. And um, and yeah, I mean, Arangar. I think I went for a bit of a cheap joke. I mean, just you know, staring at the boobs. But at the same time, <laughs> I feel like that's basically her character, right? Like she's just so in love with herself now that she's got a female body. And um, yeah, I mean, so Lanf Lanfear is my f one of my favorite characters. But I have to say, of all of these, uh, Ishamael as as uh, Baalzaman <laughs> here is fantastic. I love the uh, the flame in the eyes. It's just for great. me like um, I, I drew it with like you know the flaming eyes and stuff because for me it was always so funny. Like I listened to uh, Wheel of Time more than I read it, and yeah. um, in the Michael Kramer version when um, uh, Ishamel is completely mad, like he's gone completely crazy. He's like crazy Ishi as I call him, and um, <laughs> he's like in that part where he's is talking to like Rand's mind or something and he just goes like die 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 for like 10 minutes I don't know I mean it's like maybe just one minute but like he just sees right, it for right. so long and I'm like that's that's him like that's when you know the eyes just go crazy and stuff so yeah I love that I like it's immediately and like you said there's most of these are just immediately recognizable, like exact, you know, who you who you intended them to be. And I want to point out these these new ones you put out today, right? So you finished the set. Let's yeah. throw, this, throw this up for viewers. Uh, of these five, which is your favorite? Like, what did you like pulling out of these Forsaken um, and these? So I think for this one, this last set, I think Asmodean is definitely like. Um, I mean, Asmodean <laughs> is just great. I mean, it's like I don't know if you if you remember that. Um, on Tumblr, there was this um, meme, 
like real of time meme that came out where like there were all the names of the forsaken and he's like you know daughter of the night and all these like really scary names and then he's just like musician and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that it's like it's so great because it's not really a forsaken at all like it's just kind of there for the fun of it like you know just for <laughs> some kicks i don't know and um yeah, so like I, I feel like I just want him to be sort of like there playing his music. Yeah, I and, think that's um, a that's a good that's a good vibe for Asmodian. Like Asmodian is like the least forsaken of all the yeah. forsaken, and I love that. Like you said, it just calls him out as musician. <laughs> it's like it's just like okay, <laughs> I, and um, yeah, and I actually uh, like drawing uh, Moridin as well because um, I don't know. For me, it's always. I mean, are we allowed to talk spoilers, right? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question for those that are watching. We're not here to spoil the entire books, but we're going to be talking about, obviously, some characters in the books. So, you know, Taylor, you can throw up a spoiler banner for anyone. We'll leave the spoiler banner up for this part of the conversation, and then we'll take yeah. it down. So if you're – and we'll let you know kind of – I'll let you know when we're done having our spoiler conversation. But, yeah, go ahead and uh, say what yeah, you're going to say. Basically, for me um... – the fact that like Rand become like well, I mean Rand is still Rand at the end, right? But he's he's got Moridin's body, right? And for me that was always so problematic because I'm like, how are you gonna be able to look at yourself in the mirror? It's like this is the yeah. body of like the guy that was like totally trying to kill you like a second before. And uh, and so for me drawing Moridin as a chibi was actually a good way to process the fact that his body can be good. Like he if he, if he you know if you take away the sa in his eye, then he can totally be a good guy and be around at the end of the you know, at the end of the series. So Yeah, and, and, and you bring up an interesting point, uh, which is and, and this was brought up in our last episode, we talked about Moiraine in Robert Jordan's notes. And again, this is spoilerish yeah. and this is very much end of book spoiler stuff. So if you're if you're listening, <laughs> we warned you. But uh, I think Therese, one of my guests, brought this up, which was that Moiraine recognizes that body too. Um, yeah. It was related to, and in relation to the, you know, the torture she was going through. So if you consider post, you know, last yeah. battle moments when it comes to Rand and Moiraine, I, I hadn't really sat down and thought about it too much. And I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's huge. But um, I mean, do, do you think that Moiraine will know that, you know, Rand survived? Like, do you think that they, that the world will know that, they, that he survived, like, after a bit of time has passed or... I think it'd be like kind of like uh, Robert Jordan does with all of them. It'll become kind of this myth, right? Yeah. It'll be like mythical that he survived and, you know, somebody believes that he, he was he there. He still yeah. roams the world somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think that just, and that's why I, I think I love about that piece. Uh, I think uh, we're done with spoilers, Taylor. You can bring, yeah. you can take the banner down um, at this point. Uh, and for those of you that are listening, <laughs> hopefully you've skipped ahead. We are done with spoilers for the moment. Uh, I did want to bring up this when it came to your Watt Chibis. I noticed uh, months ago, <clears throat> I don't know when you started doing these, but I, I want to say it was around March, April. Maybe you started doing these yeah. earlier, but with the commissions that you started doing for some of the fan pages out there. Um, how did that come along? I mean, did you just, were you getting so many requests, um, you just decided to do them? Yeah, I think basically for me, well, it was the start of the lockdown in Italy uh, in March. And um, so I was kind of like freer from my other jobs that I do with an illustrator. And um, yeah, I, I did receive quite a lot of um, requests. And I was like, well, you know, no better time than a lockdown to take yeah. on commissions. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, actually. I mean, I think now I have done more sort of private watchibis than actual you know, chibis from the book. <laughs> right, so, right. I feel I like... Show, while, while, you're, while you're describing them, let me, just, let me show this, I'll show some of the fans. Uh, let's put it up on screen. Uh, one of my favorite is definitely the one you did for uh, the Black Tower podcast. Yeah. The, the three of them. That was a lot of fun. Uh, have you found this to be more... Is this more fun to do these than just picking up a yeah, character in a way, books? I think it is. Like, I love the fact that people... So, so there's sort of like, there's two types of people, right? So there's the people who want to be a character in Wheel of Time, so they send me a picture and they go like, I would like to be me, but sort of this character. So I have to translate some of their features in the character so that it's recognizable that it's them, but it's still, you know, the character that we love. And um, and then there's the people who just want to be a character in real time. So they go, you know, like, I want to be a warder or, you know, an Aes Sedai of this Aja. And, uh, and I think for this one, it's really cool because I get to design, you know, their um, nationality, uh, the items they wear, you know, like for um, Aes Sedai and Chandlers in general, it's really nice because maybe they have, you know, some sort of 
um you know they have you know the little brooch um to yeah. you know amplify the power and um and i mean again if they are if they're Aes Sedai and you know they are from Aradoman, then i get to design their clothes in a certain style and you know we get loads of information on fashion from uh, robert jordan so i'm all set for that uh, and, um yeah I, th I think that's really fun yeah, they're, it's it, they're they're a lot of fun to just stare at. Honestly, it's one of those. What what I love about these, is it's similar to the books. It's like you can just take a first glance and have fun with them, but then it's yeah. fun to just go back and actually lean in and stare at these. And uh, I, I love that Twitter time was just you know they're full of these. You, you've done a fantastic job of just uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of the fan accounts have it, and it's just so fun to see it. I'd like to like basically when I when I go down you know Twitter time and I see everybody's like Twitter tweets and stuff. Um, it's so nice when I see like so many uh, profile pictures with one of my chibis, and I'm like, how cool it would be if like all of them were like chibis. Make a lot of I love it. I love it. Uh, Rob Christensen just said in chat, uh, a Taylor chibi. I think that needs to happen too. And yeah. beyond uh, Bain and Chad said she should do a Matt chibi for Dusty Wheel. That being said, <laughs> let's debut that very thing. Here, everybody, you're going to see uh, the chibi that uh, that Maria made for me, actually, and gave it to me this morning. Yes, there is the innkeeper of the dusty wheel in chibi form i love my hairdo honestly <laughs> i love this so much and i love the symbol that you put on the apron that's that's so fantastic uh, wow. my, uh my, my yeah well and my my family just loved this thing uh so i i have to get this onto twitter after the show i'll make sure to tweet this out and instagram this and and this just may become the symbol i i feel like it should become my twitter of time symbol I think that that's, uh, I think that's, I think that that's, it would make that, me happy. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for making that. That was, uh, that was awesome. Uh, it's so funny that everyone in chats, the, uh, they're loving it too. Uh, Aww. yeah. I, yes, you, I'm kind you, of like reading the chat, like whilst I'm trying to focus, but I get too much into the chat because people are writing so many nice things. So I have to, you know, just stay focused. No, no, that's and that's part of the that's part of the fun show. The uh, this aspect of the show, I love that the viewers come and are with us live and and take part. So always feel free; they can look over there and pull something into the show that you see. Um, and uh, Shantani just said uh, that needs to be on the wall of the inn. Yeah, I, I need to find something behind me with that uh, chibi. I need to figure that out. I'll uh, I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> we'll we'll oh. make it happen. But yeah, a Taylor chibi maybe has to come sometime in the future. That's for sure. Uh, well, well I, mean, now, I want to make um, a Steve chibi as well. <laughs> I mean, oh, I kind of no. wanted to do it like, you know, a couple of weeks ago when the whole Steve thing happened. Well, maybe a mm -hmm. month ago. I can't remember. But then I was too busy and I couldn't. Otherwise, it, I would have joined in the joke. Oh, man. Yeah, I, you, you have to do a Steve chibi. Yeah. Now, I'm saying that because I don't have to do the work. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to tell you you have to in the sense that that's – but, yeah, if you do – I'm sure fans would love the Steve chibi. The Steve's not going away. Let's, yeah. let's, let's be honest. I Steve mean, is, he's one of us. He's, he's one of us. <laughs> Steve is one of us for sure. Now, okay, watch chibis is amazing. And, and maybe I'll give this option to – I was going to ask this question at the end, but I'll ask it now as far as uh, do you anticipate still – doing commissions for more Watt um, in the future? Is that something you, you think you'll have time for? I, I, I do, like I, I love doing them and I do want to do more also because I have told several people that I would pencil them in. And um, so I think they are expecting me to at some point do <laughs> chibis for them. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I definitely want to. I'm just sort of closing a couple of like really big projects that I've been doing for the whole summer. So um, I expect maybe like somewhere around October, okay. I should be able to open commissions again. Well, I, th this is a perfect segue because I want to talk to you a little bit about your work and how you, this came about. Now, for those of you that are watching us on Facebook and Twitter, I hope you've liked this little sneak peek into our live weekly show. Come over to YouTube, you know, uh, watch the rest of this, you know, interview with Maria with us. Uh, by you can just search for the Dusty Wheel on YouTube. You can find links for us. And yeah, come join us here uh, on YouTube. Love to have you with us. Now, about this, like, how did you, you know, was this always, like, were you three and you just started drawing chibis? Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> how did uh, how did you become an illustrator? Because I, if I, I follow your work on Instagram and it's it's amazing illustration work. And I just, I'm kind of curious how it all started. 
Um, so basically, I think it all started because I, I mean, I grew up with like an absolute love for um, Disney movies and I, and also uh, Disney comics, like um, sort of Mickey Mouse and all the comics from that sort of um, universe. And also, of course, uh, anime, you know, like Sailor Moon was a, was a big fan and, uh, and stuff like that. So naturally, because I'm, I'm not a part, I wasn't a particularly uh, sporty child. I was like the sort of quiet child who read a lot. And um, so my natural pastime was just to copy all these um, characters and well, very badly, obviously, but you know, <laughs> at least. And, um, and then I sort of always had this idea that I was going to be, you know, an artist or a writer, you know, something reasonably creative uh, for the, you know, joy of my parents who wanted me to be a scientist. Uh, and <laughs> or a lawyer or a doctor or something. Um, and yeah, instead I, well, at some point I decided I needed to be more realistic. So um, I went to university to study uh, magazine publishing in London, um, oh, wow. which is not very creative at all. I mean, it's like, it's a, <laughs> like a kind of graphic design and... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't really about drawing, basically. And uh, and also my craft machine in terms of drawing was pretty bad back then. Uh, but then, you know, I tried it in London. I tried to be a graphic designer for, um, you know, the whole time I was there at uni. And then afterwards, I was working there. And at some point, I was just like, I'm not happy. You know, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to. Yeah. And, um, and so I just went back to school uh, when I was 25. And... Um, tried it all again so I, I went to an animation course and um yeah i've been trying uh, after i finished that i started bringing freelance and um i've been trying to do that since you know 2016 17 yeah well uh, you're, you're doing a fantastic job keep going that's uh yeah that's it's cool to hear that you decided to step away from that world it's it's tough i think to go down that route of jumping into the professional world especially in graphic design and not just kind of yeah. following along whatever they give you opportunity wise you know yeah, whether I mean, or not it you know also because it was actually quite, you know, quite a good opportunity for me. I mean, in London, yeah. you can make quite a lot of money being a graphic designer. It's just that I was, I was just, I didn't see the point really. I was just, you know, sort of, yeah, earning some money, but then London is so expensive. So I was basically just getting that money to stay in London and, you know, waking up and going to work, coming back and just, you know, watching something on Netflix and I was like, <laughs> wow, this is my life forever now. <laughs> so, no, it's yeah. true. It's true. I mean, I, I, I got into software design and I, I, I love design and, and ended up there. I took an opportunity and went down that road for now. My It's my life, right? It kind of can become yeah. that. Uh, and, and like you've noticed, like, uh, your passions often become your hobbies, but I just I, I think it's great that you decided to step away from that because like, that was an excellent opportunity. So uh, the fact that you've stepped away from that, it sounds like though you're still still doing work from a professional standpoint in oh, yeah. similar similarly. Do you want to kind of talk about a little bit about what you're um, doing now? Yeah, I mean I can't go into specifics about two of these projects because I've signed NDAs um, but um, and I'm afraid I'm gonna get you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone's yeah. gonna be like you've been talking about it so yeah um, but yeah I, I do mostly um, books right now um, in terms of illustration um, I'm doing a book uh, with an American author um, cool. about um, well basically um, it's about this kid who goes to um, kindergarten and uh, he's from African descent, so he looks around himself and he's like, oh, but, you know, everybody's else's skin is a different color. And then yeah. it's, it's for like very young kids. It's like um, four very... or five. And, um, and then I really like it because then every kid's sort of skin color gets associated with um, a different shade of something natural, like uh, pancakes or honey. And so oh, like cool. um, it's not the usual sort of, oh, you know, everybody's skin tone is like either you're white or black or whatever. It's like it's yeah. more about everybody's skin tone is different. Like there's not just one type. And uh, I think that's really nice in terms of, um, I don't know, approaching this sort of subject. And um, yeah, so that's one book that I'm doing. That's very um, cool. And, um, and also I do a lot of um, illustration sort of masterclasses and video courses online. Um, so that's also part of my job. And uh, yeah, are there are there books, uh, illustrations you've done for stories that 
you know, you've already completed that are not um, yeah, under NDA that you can kind of point, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, um, I have done. Well, they're they're kind of like very small because it's kind of like the two years past I've been doing illustration, but um, it wasn't for really big clients, so I doubt sure. that anybody would know them. Um, I did a book about um, sort of like a historical tale of these kids living during the Neolithic, and um, it's kind of nice, but it's you know it's published by a French uh, publishing house, so I doubt that anybody would know it. Um, and then I did some illustration for a book uh, that sort of collected lots of stories from um, brave girls from the past. So, um, so like each, each page would be about a woman from the past that had been brave and had done, you know, brave things. And I did 10 um, portraits for them. And um, are those portraits that people can find on Instagram or is that just in the book? And can they go buy um, the book out there? I if think they wanted to see it? Um, I think I posted a couple, not on Instagram, but on my actual website. So okay. like if you scroll down my work on my website, you can probably find it. My website is just my name, like mlmillustration.com. Yeah, you um, can find those. For those that are watching, uh, those links are in the description. Yeah, I didn't realize those were there. I need to go check those out afterwards. Uh, those, <laughs> those sound fun. Well, I mean, when it comes to that, the story artist side versus illustrating kind of the characters versus illustrating your own characters, do you have kind of a favorite place a favorite type of illustration that you do where it's either your own or someone else's um i guess i mean more than i i guess the, the thing is like i i do most of my job as an illustrator so um i have to illustrate you know characters in context and i actually hate uh drawing like backgrounds uh, because <laughs> it doesn't come naturally to me <laughs> And um, so, yeah, so I guess my like my true calling would be to just be a character designer for my own characters. So that's definitely like basically when I when I get a new client and we're just doing, you know, concepts for all the characters in the book and stuff like that. That's probably my favorite part of the job yeah. uh, rather than actually, you know, illustrating everything, um, because you can just focus on the character and, you know, get. As, as you were saying, like sort of in the chibis as well, you can sort of see it, you know, like just introduce in the character those um really specific sort of like personality traits that you can guess um from the way that the character is standing the way that the character is you know wearing a certain t-shirt or um you know hair accessories or whatever like really small things that subconsciously convey what the character is actually like inside so like yeah. i can guess like the psychology of the character is my favorite sort of part aspect of it yeah well uh, speaking about the psychology of characters uh, when it comes to fiction fantasy uh, and the Wheel of Time, like how did you get into them? Because I want to talk about some of the favorites and you know the ones you maybe associate with or the ones you like the most. But how did you end up finding the Wheel of Time? Are you also a reader? Was that just also a passion of yours growing up? Um, yeah, I mean, I am a, a big reader. Like I'm, I read incredibly fast. I'm not even boasting. Like I swear, <laughs> like, <laughs> I have read. Um, Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. I don't even know how many pages it is because I always read on ebooks, but um, I've read it all in one day, like 24 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, was, that, was that ever since you were a kid? Did you just pick up books? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, um, I don't know if you know um, Isaac Asimov, like the yeah. Yeah. Uh, galactic sort of uh, saga. Foundation series, yeah. Yeah, the right. Foundation series. Not just the three first books, but like the whole seven. Um, I read it like in one week over like when I was like 12 uh, over like Christmas holidays. So yeah, so like it's always been like a really big thing of mine, uh, both uh, sci-fi and fantasy. And um, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's always been my my sort of favorite genre. And um, was Wheel, Wheel of Time... Time. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, but no. yeah, um, Wheel of Time wasn't really... Um, is is not really a thing in Italy. Um, mm. I, I don't know why. Like even I think in the UK is not even that famous. Um, it's more like a US thing. And um, <laughs> I just read Dear God all seven books in one week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Did she sleep? No. But I was twelve, so I didn't need to. <laughs> you didn't have to sleep. Exactly. Those were the those were the good old days. Uh, you know, where you could just read until four in the morning and no consequence. Um, exactly. Um, but yeah, so. Um, I, I didn't know Wheel of Time growing up at all. So like I, I read, you know, all the big uh, fantasy sort of sagas, but not Wheel of Time. And then I was in China in 2013 
um, after having my sort of like breakdown in London and going like, I don't want to be a graphic designer. I just went to China I, as an as a English teacher. I was like, I need to get away. So over there. And, um, <laughs> yeah. That's a segue. Just, that's quite the segue of life right there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I just basically um, applied online and just got the first job that got back to me. And I was like, OK, here I go, Tianjin. I'm in Tianjin now. <laughs> and, um, and over there, uh, a friend of mine and a colleague of mine who had read Wheel of Time um, was like, oh, if you like fantasy, you know, I have these books and I can lend them to you. And honestly, I didn't have any other reading material. So I was like, OK, I'll give it a go. And I remember like the first 50 pages, I was really confused. And I was like, <laughs> is like why is he walking like up this road and doesn't make any sense? And um, I think I actually went back the day after to my friend. and I was like, that book you gave me is crap. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand anything. And he's like, just be patient. And yeah. And then I was patient. And then I just, you know, read all of it. Um, I think in under a year, probably like about six months, nice. um, was, I was working in China. And, um, and after that, I was like, like most other fans, I think, uh, I was like, well, now that's it. I cannot read anything else. <laughs> what do I do because, now? Right. <laughs> but now it's my, my, my fantasy life, my life, my life as a fantasy reader is ended. Like, there's nothing better than this. Was there anything other than, so was Wheel of Time, I guess, your first entry into more the fantasy, fantasy side of the genre? Or had you done, have you read some other fantasy fiction before then? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I read all the big ones like um, Lord of the Rings and okay. um, I don't know. I mean, most of like the smaller sort of um, young adult series, Narnia and yeah. all of that. I mean, Harry Potter, obviously, and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think the... Wheel of Time was the first time that I found um, a magic system that was kind of different from the others that I read before. And, um, and I really liked that also because it challenged my way of thinking. Like most when uh, I remember there's one specific point uh, in um, Eye of the World where Egwene is like, Moraine is um, uh, basically impossible to read or bring her in 24 hours. It is possible, I swear. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's there's one point where, you know, um, they're going towards, um, well, basically, they just started traveling and Moraine is teaching Egwene um, how to access the one power. And uh, and she teaches Egwene um, that, you know, women are stronger in uh, water and air and men are stronger in um, in fire and earth. And Egwene goes like, that's really unfair. Like, why do they get, <laughs> why do they get the, you know, the strongest um, elements? And, uh, and I think from my perspective i felt very much like a wayne like um i really enjoy their character because i feel like i i really followed her along um you know from the start when i'm like yeah Egwene is right it's like this is crap i mean why why is it unfair like that and then the more she grows and the more you know she realizes that there's no one element that is really stronger than the other you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah yeah, that's so, well, interesting about Egwene. I want to kind of dig in there a little bit. Just as a reminder for those of you that are watching, we are a live call-in talk show. You can give us a phone call a, a call here at 1313-TALK-WATT or 1313-825-5968. If you have a question from Maria, you just want to tell her, you know, how amazing her Watt chibi that she did of me was, you can give a call and then let us know. I know, but feel free to call in uh, and, and ask a question if you have one for her. We'll leave those phone lines open just for probably the next 30 minutes as we continue just to chat. And if you're here... Uh, here on YouTube, please give this video a like. Other fans will find this and learn more about Maria and and uh, get to know this content creator. Uh, again, all the content creators that are out there have been amazing that have been on the show, but I love talking art uh, and what inspires you. So jumping back into Egwene, uh, have you done any art of Egwene? Is there, uh, is there did, people actually. find some? Um, okay. I mean, there's definitely some on my Tumblr. Uh, there's some art of Egwene uh, dressed in sort of novice white. Um, I recently did um, sort of like a modern version of Egwene. So like I was I was kind of like imagining um, all of the main female characters like Egwene, um, Birgitte, um, Elaine and uh, Avienda as sort of like gal pals hanging out at the gym. 
Uh, <laughs> and so, like, and I was like, I was trying to associate what they would be doing. So like, um, I think Elaine is definitely like a yoga babe. Like she'd be, you know, like all into like hot, hot <laughs> yoga and Pilates. And um, Birgitte, I mean, she's an archer, obviously. Um, and Avienda is doing like CrossFit, like crazy, like she's huge. And, uh, and I mean, and I was like, Egwene, I think she'd be a runner because she's like really lithe and, uh, you know, and fast and, but also like really determined. Right. Um, so a runner, but like a marathon runner, I think. Uh, so I did, um, um, I did a piece of art of, of, of her, um, like in sort of like running clothes and, um, and I did one of like Egwene with like an egg, like two or three years ago, because I was like, oh, such a good egg. Obviously, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's not that funny, but there you go. I, well, I love I love Elaine by the way as a yoga babe. That's a that's that's so on point. I never thought about Egwene as a marathon runner, but I totally agree with this idea. What other attributes that you would pull out for Egwene? I guess for you because she's one of your favorites. Yeah. What is it? Uh, is it because it's something that is associated to what you believe, or is it just something you really like about Egwene? I think I mm, sort of identify with Egwene a little bit, which doesn't sound arrogant. <laughs> I mean, but like she's um, she's she's a little bit of um, you know the know-it-all, like the 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 you know the smartest in the class, the ones that always wants to know everything. She's yeah, like really sure. determined to uh, be the best at what she does, and uh, I think that's a really good trait to have in your personality. Um, as long as it doesn't make you like incredibly annoying. Uh, but, like, <laughs> and, I mean, she's a bit annoying at the start, but I think like she tempers it a lot, especially when she moves in with the wise ones. And I think that's why like she's um, like, I, th I think that's why she becomes such a well-rounded character because she starts with like some very obvious flaws and then the, the wise ones and the way sort of like beats it out of her. Like she, you know, she becomes like such an amazing leader. And, um, and she, like, I think the moment where she's in the tower and um, I guess kind of spoilery here because it's- Yeah, so yeah, and maybe this is a, well, just as a reminder again, we're talking about characters of the wheel of time. So some things are gonna be spoiled for you here. If you've, you've probably heard a little couple spoilers here again, but yeah, go ahead. And uh, most people that are watching this know that unless we call this out as a non-spoiler episode, there's going to be some spoilers, but it's a good reminder. But yeah, go ahead and we'll see what you're gonna say. And um, yeah, I mean, I think when she's in the tower and you know, she's captive and uh, sort of like Elida is trying to break her and she's just, um, that's the moment where she kind of like goes to the next step again. Like she realizes that, you know, she, she doesn't take the whole like tower brain broken as a partisan anymore. Like she's not, she's not, she's not trying for her side to win. Sure. She just wants the white tower to be whole. And, and that, you know, and that's why she makes the Aes Sedai that were with her actually trying to, you know, they, when they, before they are accepted back in the tower, they still have to say sorry because all of them are, you know, culpable you know they're all guilty for the division and i think sure. that's what makes her like really incredible as a leader is like she's she really she literally just cares for the best of you know for the well-being of the tower as a whole and uh, i think that's really amazing yeah no and and, and honestly i know that those who are watching i'm seeing kind of a, some some love for Egwene. there's been a lot of fan uh hate for Egwene. so it's yeah. I, I like talking to fans of particular characters because they can illuminate what it is that is redeemable about a character and it makes yeah. anyone else who won't consider those ideas at least take a take a step back and and think about it so yeah i think you picked out some really uh, good positives of Egwene. now before we move on from here we do have a caller uh from sweden let's uh let's bring him or her into the show welcome to the dusty wheel how are you doing tonight yeah hello it's double mcshay there um uh, hey it's double how are you doing? Uh, Hey, uh, I had a question I wanted to ask uh, a few shows ago when you had uh, your mus musicians uh, at the show, and um, and it's connected to this. Okay. Because one one thing I I love on the YouTube is uh, the Do Mice Wells uh, time lapse speed painting set to the to the audiobook. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have seen that. But um, now, uh, check it out. It's great. Anyway, I would love to see uh, a time-lapse speed painting set to 
original fan made uh, music. I, I got you. Um, so, okay. You're, you're saying, yeah, because we just did a, you know, for you, Maria, we just did a, an episode, I think it was last Sunday, with talking about music in the Wheel of Time. And we had a couple of musicians on with us. Um, and basically, you're, you'd love to see a speed, uh, Maria do a kind of some type of speed drawing or speed painting to mm-hmm. original Wheel of Time music. <laughs> so, yeah, be... uh, a collaboration of sorts. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. So, yeah, I think that's something that maybe afterwards. Uh, yeah we can talk about because that'd be that'd be a lot of fun to see uh you know have a mix-up of content creators like that uh, or mashup and definitely like that. yeah, that's a great idea so uh, uh you, by, the uh, way, by the way Mar- maria i love your art your you. figures are great <laughs> thank yeah. you are you uh, oh sorry maria sorry no no go ahead i was gonna say are, are you a are you an Egwene fan uh stubble um i'm uh flipping back and forth uh, <laughs> in some yeah. books she's great in some, in some books i'm uh, a bit irritated by her sure sure uh by the way uh, thank you yes. for calling in and a great idea of this time lapse uh yeah. mashup idea so we'll have to think that we'll have to think that through and and uh, yeah well hey man have a good evening or afternoon or yeah night <laughs> i think you're out in sweden yeah. at night and we'll we'll talk to you soon yeah great hey, bye-bye bye bye yeah, that's a that's a fun idea. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, doing I think that is one of the things I really enjoy about um, artwork in general. My daughter draws dragons and has drawn dragons uh, for many many years. Wow, and it's funny. Like, funny. well, like you said, uh, you know, you start off and maybe not you're not so good at it. And we just <laughs> kept on telling her like, just keep drawing them. And now I can she can just. She can just drop out a dragon in like three hours, and it's amazing. I love wow. watching the time lapse of her work uh, in that same way. So have you posted any time lapse of the drawings that you've done? Is it something that um, fans can see? I actually had um, in mind um, because basically I'm trying to brave the sort of like uncharted waters of TikTok, which makes oh. me feel really old because <laughs> everybody here is like 15. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was thinking maybe of doing like a, a series on TikTok of like when when I do the what chibis to do like the time lapse on TikTok. Um, so yeah, I was toying with this idea, and also I have some time lapse on my Instagram, and also some sort of like quick tutorials on Instagram uh, when I show the time lapse. But I don't think it's something that I post on Twitter that much. Um, so because I, I I feel like Twitter is more like for spontaneous sort of. Uh, conversation rather than yeah. you know something like more thought out like a time lapse, um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to um, do some more um, chibi sort of time lapses. Also because I think like a lot of people who um, are sort of like artsy and creative maybe want to join in the you know the chibi drawing, and I can make some tutorials and we can all draw chibis together. So yeah, yeah I love I love that idea. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great idea. And, and by the way, someone brought up uh, that you. They saw a time lapse of like. Did you do some artwork of Shalon from? Uh, that's how I say your name from Brandon Sanderson's uh, yeah. Stormlight Archive series. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you are also a fan of Brandon Sanderson's. Uh, is that yeah. true? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you just need to look you at t- my Instagram sort of like feed to realize that I'm a big fan of uh, Brandon Sanderson. But um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I basically. Uh, as I was saying, like after I finished Wheel of Time, I was like, okay, now I cannot read anything ever again. And then I stumbled upon, I think my first Brandon Sanderson was Mistborn. I, sh- I should uh, I should I should uh, point this out there. People are asking in chat um, for no spoilers when it comes to Brandon's books. So let's let's try to. Uh, you can yeah. mention a character that you drew, but let's yeah, try yeah, yeah. to keep it away from this. It's well, just, I mean, I... <laughs> he's a character you know that appears in the first like book, so it's okay. But, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so like my first uh, Brandon Sanderson was Mistborn, um, and I read Era One, and um, I think I am pretty stubborn. Like when I love something, I really love it, and then if they change it up, I get really annoyed. So basically, I read Era One, and then I went on to Era Two, and the first one, the first book of Era Two, will just came out when I when I started reading it, and I was like, I hate this. I cannot read this. Like none of the characters are the same. <laughs> where are they going like it's terrible um and, and then you know like i just need to be pushed a little and now actually i prefer era two from era one so interesting okay yeah yeah That's, like I'm, uh... I'm really i feel like i'm too river stock in this way like I'm, I'm so stubborn if someone tries to push me but then like when i make my mind up on my own i'm like yeah actually this is really good 
So, yeah. It's funny. I'm trying to think between the two. It's hard. I, I don't think I have a preference. I, I guess I like them differently, but I haven't picked one over the other just yet. But I think I've read Era 2 most recently, so I think I would have to say that I just kind of give that. But I, I guess I have a lot of love for it. That was one of the earlier books I'd read about from Brandon's in The Mistborn. Yeah. So I think I just have a lot of love for the, the originals just because that was some of his first work. Yeah. Now and, we have to. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, and also. Um, Stormlight is probably like my favorite in general in terms of the various parts of the Cosmere. I think Stormlight is just amazing. It's one of the yeah, it it, it absolutely is. I love I love sweeping epic fantasy like that. So we have two other callers. Let's uh let's bring in our next caller. It's Megan. <laughs> Megan, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. So what's your uh, what's your question for Maria? So my question is. Which character from Wheel of Time would you cosplay? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I think I would probably cosplay Fail. Oh, um, nice. Mostly because I think um, that's the character that people have told me I look most like. Um, oh, so, yeah. Yeah. And also because I actually quite like her, in spite of all the hate. <laughs> so, yes! Yeah. Yeah. This is so great, by the yes. way. You picked I Egwene also like Fael. Oh, I love both Egwene and Fael. Yeah. What, what do you, so Megan, when it comes to cosplay, is that, would you pick either of those characters or who would you cosplay if it came to the Wheel of Time? Well, I think I would be a Maiden of the Spear, but okay. I'd also like to know which character you would cosplay. I would cosplay the Innkeeper. In yeah. Like <laughs> Boring. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That's, yeah, that's, that's cheating. You're right. That's cheating. Uh, so I, uh, beyond that, I guess I would want to cosplay maybe um, uh, Bail Damon. I, I think he has really. Oh, I think he has a. I think he has just has a fun uh, arc in the books, right? He doesn't have to do any of the heavy lifting. He just gets to go out and just kind of yeah. take part in the in the in the weave of the pattern, but not in any significantly uh, annoying way. And and he's he's well, a lot more mature than some of the younger characters. So yeah, failed him on. There's there's my answer. <laughs> you wouldn't cosplay Landfear? <laughs> yeah, that's a you know I'm not against trying someday. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday, way in the future. Like I, like I say, the in here, the Dusty Wheel, this is about as cosplay as I typically get. So that would take a little bit for me to uh, step forward as a Landfear cosplay. Uh, <laughs> Megan, thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate thank that. You. Great question. Great question. Yep. Hey, have a good evening. Good, I see Kim not saying evening because we're going to have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I always, uh, since we do our Wednesday night shows, I'm always saying evening and night and... Uh, I always forget on Saturdays. Yeah, that's a. Have you done cosplay of characters before? Either no, Cosmere I haven't. characters. I feel like no. um. I mean, I'm really in awe of cosplayers. Like they're so good when you know they, with all the costumes and the accessories, especially the ones that like people who make them themselves. Right. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'd be really bad. Like I'd just sort of like buy some stuff and like try and make it myself. But I'm not really that good with like clothes that way. So. I don't know. Also, I you know I've never been to Dragon Con because it's you know all the way over there. So you yeah. you, you have to come out to uh, Jordan Con sometime. That would be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, some sometime in the future, hopefully we'll we'll be back to traveling uh, next year, and and uh, you know hopefully the world will be in a place where that's that's possible. But yeah, so it's Jordan Con someday, something it would be awesome yeah. to have you out there. I mean, um, it would be amazing to you know to attend. It's just that you know it's a long way away for me. <laughs> What? <laughs> Italy's a long way away from Georgia? What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a that is a that's a long drive. That's a long drive. Yeah. <laughs> um, like drive on the water as well. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> now for those of you that are still here with us in live chat, uh, we do have a sneak peek going on tonight for uh, the the Dusty Wheel cut. And so I meant to do this on Wednesday, but I'll do this for everybody that's in chat right now on YouTube. Taylor, do you mind getting us a, a lottery giveaway for a, being one of the fans that can come to the sneak peek this afternoon? Uh, by the way, the look Taylor just gave me, 
classic. <laughs> Taylor's like, you didn't tell me this was coming. Thanks a lot, Dad. Uh, so uh, he'll he'll throw that together for us here shortly. And for those of you that are in chat, if you're interested, you can join the, the lottery here and we'll pick a winner at the end. And you can come enjoy a little sneak peek of the Dusty Wheel Cut of Winter Dragon this afternoon. So uh, I don't want to get that. You're like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> You're like, can can I come? Uh, have you seen? <laughs> have you seen? While we're while we're on the topic, have you seen Winter Dragon? The oh, yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a great reaction. I I think that we should just cut that part of the video out tonight and just be like, have you seen Winter Dragon? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. well, I'm excited then with that reaction to see how you react to the Dusty Wheel cut. I'll have I to... actually I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, 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 I am so looking forward to hearing everyone's reactions afterwards. This will be a lot of fun. We have, uh, we have another caller. Let's, let's bring our caller in. Hey, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing this afternoon? Hi, how are you? Great. What was your, what was your name? Um, oh, I'm Art. Uh, I'm going to call before, <laughs> but I just uh, thought it would be apt to um, tune in for, for the Art show. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so, what was your what was your question from Maria? Like quite a question comment thing. Um, okay. As a child, uh, I think you mentioned before, like you like to do. I um, I was a doodler as a child too. I like to, um, you know, while I'm listening in class, you know, as, as young as five years old, I would doodle a lot. And um, studies say that like that kind of activity kind of broadens the mind and helps you focus. And, um, as it pertains to like wheel of time, I always, as I started, you know, reading the books and growing up, um, I kind of pertained like the, you know, searching for the void and using concentration methods and, um, focusing, uh, and I kind of allocated that in my, you know, kind of doodling in my art. I was wondering if you had some kind of like similar process that's like kind of parallels, like, embracing the source or the concentration method when it comes to like creative things like your art um that's a really good question i mean it's like it's really complex um so i don't really have it regarding my art as in when i draw i sort of like it's it's kind of like a like a, a meditation on its own without really even thinking about it so like i mm. usually especially when i draw characters that are my characters or I, I I sort of like um, create a whole story for them whilst I'm drawing them and like uh, it's weird it's like one of those processes that you don't know where it starts like um, I, I start drawing them but then I get to know them better whilst I'm drawing them so it's kind of like uh, it feeds off both ways um, but yeah I'm definitely uh, instead in, in in general like for meditation I've started like uh, taking up the sort of the the, the rosebud method of like opening up to the source whilst I meditate. Um, I <laughs> find that for me, it's more useful than most strategies that I've read about, like, um, you know, like focusing on breath and stuff. Like I, I visualize the, the flower opening up and it helps me to go into that meditative state. So yeah, I've definitely taken that from <laughs> Wheel of Time. That's cool. That's, that's really cool. Uh, awesome. Art, do you use that? Do you use this uh, that, that oh. technique for anything in life? Oh, definitely. Um, ever since I was a teenager and I discovered the books, like I often do use um, the flame in the void, which is kind of sounds odd or nerdy, but it's helped me a lot. Like, in, um, I don't know, physical activities too, like not just art um, in running long distances. I, yeah. I find it easier to concentrate if I use that kind of visualization. Definitely. Yeah, I, I took part in martial arts for three or four years and I definitely tried to apply it there. <laughs> When, especially when mm -hmm. my sensei had us uh, doing kicks for 30 minutes uh, in a row. That was oh. uh, really tried to embrace, <laughs> I tried yeah. to embrace the flame of the void. Cause it was there's only the flame. There's only the void. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not my legs falling off. Yeah. But the funniest part is he, uh, he walked out of the room uh, about 10 mm -hmm. minutes into that. And he came back 15 minutes later and you could see the surprise in his face of, oh yeah, I left these people doing this. And of course they were going to keep mm -hmm. doing it until I came yeah. back. And he's like, you can stop. <laughs> and we were like, oh my gosh. And there, that was that moment. It was like 25 minutes in. That's where your kicks are like just going a foot off the ground. 
Yeah. You're still going through the motions because yeah. because you, you have to. <laughs> Pretty amazing that you still, you know, kept doing it even if he wasn't in the room. Oh, no one wanted to stop. That was not a... Uh, he wasn't a sensei that you stopped doing what yeah. he asked you to do. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not how, that, that wasn't the kind of uh, uh, respect and uh, appreciation, I guess, that we had for him. So, hey, Art, thank you so much for calling in. Really appreciate it. And great yeah. question. Thank you. I really that's enjoy good. your art, Maria. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it, Art. Bye-bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. So, yeah, uh, fantastic question. Yeah, Flame in the Void. Uh, and it is, there. there's some... Like you said, it's kind of nerdy when you might say it, but to Wheel of Time fans, we're all like, yeah, yeah. I get that. I, really I, mean, <laughs> I, did, I did try and use the um, uh, Aes Sedai sort of like trick for uh, ignoring heat and cold like many times. And uh, I always think, you know, maybe if I try it one more time, it will actually work. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> right. still, you know, I'm still trying. You're still trying. You're still trying to get yeah. that. Uh, so we're going to take uh, this next call. And then I want to take you through what I call the portal stone round of this uh, interview. <laughs> uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun there. Uh, Taylor, did you throw up uh, the lottery here for anyone that wants to take part or uh, for a potential invitation to the sneak peek? Taylor will add that to um, chat here in just a minute or two. You'll see that come in. If you've never done this before and you're here on YouTube, you do have to kind of sign in if you want to join in and chat and get part of this. You'll notice that you'll need to put up an exclamation point and the word raffle together, and that's how you enter it in chat. Don't do it yet, but you'll see Taylor's uh, notification show up in chat, and that will be part of it. So let's bring in our next caller to the show. It's, uh, it's someone we know who is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we know him as Lancer, but we also know him as uh, Norm. Welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? Hello, good sir. Of course, I raise my mug to you and, of course, to your TV as well. Uh, hello <laughs> or good evening, Maria. How are you today or tonight for you? <laughs> I, have, I have my question for you, Maria. Two things. One, what are you uh, artistically looking forward to uh, seeing in the show? And my second question is, is that a stark wolf on your wall back there? Yes, it is. <laughs> nice, nice pick up there, Norm. <laughs> I'm just gonna like I'm probably gonna ruin everything now, but yep. Oh, nice. But it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I am a Stark fan, obviously. But before you know, like everything happened. Anyway, uh, so my what I'm looking forward to, artistically speaking, in the show is definitely the fashion. Like, I mean, I know it's like it's gonna sound like lame, but like I really want to see like all the different like fashion from all the different nationalities, and I really hope they keep that diversity, and um, and also I hope that they can integrate it into our like sort of contemporary canons of beauty. So like, um, I mean, you know, like the the rat tails and stuff for the IU. I'm like, yeah, just maybe cut that because that was like really <laughs> 80s, but like it's not really cool now to have that like so i'm like i just really want them to sort of make something that would look cool for us right now in 2020 so like take the same sort of ideas but like integrate them you know like in um in game of thrones like i was a sucker for anything that marjorie wore like she she just had the most amazing dresses and I feel like if they manage to do something like that for this show, like um, really integrate diversity of the fashion and contemporary fashion sense, that would be great. Yeah, that's a that's a fun one to do. And like you said, yeah, that's going to be an interesting choice for them, uh, whether or not they hold on to some of those things, like you said, like the rat tails and, and things yeah, that mean, maybe were, were popular at the time, but not so much today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Would that bother you, Lancer? Do you have to have the? Do you have to have every single piece of uh, Jordan's writing as far as description of the characters, or would you like to see them, you know, make some choices uh, from an artistic standpoint, um, even from a clothing standpoint, that would work better today? I I think it it has to be you know there has to be a, a give and take, sixty forty book to practical sense. Because, you know, I don't know what a cat and sewer would, would, would look like in real life, especially if you're going to be out in the desert 24-7. So, I mean, you know, I, I would like, it has to be functional, but then it has to look good. I mean, I'm not going to trip out if <laughs> Rand's laces weren't the right type or Matt was wearing the wrong kind of lace on the left hand as opposed to <laughs> the right hand. <laughs> so, when you know someone's going to go crazy on that. But you know what I would love to see? 
I would love to see someone do something meta and have Maria's chibis on the side in Camelin and have a guy who or her, you know, sitting there actually drawing something and all of a sudden you look down and it's one of her chibis and that would be so meta. <laughs> that would be cool. That yeah, would be yeah. Amazing. I, mean, I don't <laughs> yeah. think that's gonna happen, but I mean that would be great. <laughs> That would be fantastic. Hey, Norm, as always, really appreciate you calling in and excellent question, sir. Yep. Have, Thank you. Have, have Thank you, sir. you guys take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. So that, that, I like how you picked out the uh, the wolf on the wall there. That was impressive. Yeah, I mean, I actually, you know, I, actually I, I was wondering if someone was going to notice. So I'm really pleased that he did. Yeah, that's, that's so good that he did. Uh, yeah. I'm seeing some comments about the rat tails. I see Shantani said, uh, they're so phantom menace to me. But then we also see cast from faves, rat tails, but make it fashion. That's an <laughs> interesting idea, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it, it can be done. I mean, I'm sure that it can be done. That's what I mean. Like, I, I hope that they can mix with contemporary fashion sense, not that they need to be dressed in a way that we would today. More right, like right, right. they would, something that would appeal to the eye of the viewer today if you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can see fashion coming back in from the 60s and 70s yeah. today, but it has today's sensibilities applied to it. Exactly. Right? Uh, and also, yeah. I feel like in, it really needs to... I don't, I'm sure it's going to be like that. Like, I feel like I really want to see the production value. You know, like, when when if they wear something like, you know, like a leather vest or, like, heavy armor, like, I want to feel like that's really heavy, you know, like, not cheap. But I'm sure that they are going to do that. So yeah. And just this kind of just uh, one-off question to that: Did you have you seen the picture that was kind of leaked out there of a maybe white cloaks outfit and what they might look like? I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> okay, well maybe after this, it's yeah. somewhere out there on the good old internet. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Uh, and I'm kind of, yeah. kind of I'm curious with your uh, your you know, liking the fashion sense side of the Wheel of Time, what you would think about what you see there. Now, we're not, we haven't seen the final product or anything like that, right? We're seeing, we're seeing some leaked something, you know, so yeah, it's hard yeah, to been, know until you see it in like the show. Bit, um, outside of the world for the past four days, because I was on holiday and like, there wasn't really much of a signal. So I haven't yeah. seen it. No, yeah. It's a, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested. To see, like I said, you can probably look it up and find it. Now, for those of you that are in chat, Taylor did start the raffle, the lottery. So if you want to take part, remember to put exclamation point raffle. Feel free, Maria, if you want to jump in there. <laughs> you yeah. can. You, you can <laughs> yeah, it's totally. You can put that in there. Uh, exclamation point raffle, one word, and you'll get entered and we'll right here, you know, in the next 15, 20 minutes, we'll, we'll, do, a, we'll do a pick for it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> and for those of you that have never done this before, no matter how many times you – put exclamation point raffle it's only going to count you once it's funny to see people do it seven times you know i get it just to make sure i i understand that so i think it's a good time to jump into what i like to call the portal stone round of I am these discussions so the whole concept is here we're just going to take your first answer these are just like this doesn't have to be you in this world it can just be you among other worlds here don't don't hold on to like care so much about this. This is going to be Maria in other portal stone worlds out there. Uh, so, but I just want you to answer off the cuff answers to these wheel of time questions. Here we go. Okay. Favorite wheel of time book. Oh, uh, the shadow rising favorite villain. Um, Lamphere. favorite channeler. Tatswain. character. You disliked the most when you first read the books. Um, Matt. Most disliked character now. <sighs> Two on. Sell me on the Wheel of Time in as few words as possible. Um, kids leave the village with a magical female Gandalf and find themselves um, becoming rulers of the world. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I it started off as sort of like kids leave with the, <laughs> the magical, you know, whatever. And I was like, I don't know, but that ended strong. I love it. I love it. Um, critique, critique the wheel of time in as few words as possible. Critique is in like, um, yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah. Just tell me like what is not so good. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I don't, I don't really, I really don't want to open a kind of worms here, but I think, <laughs> You're Portal Stone. This is Portal Stone Maria. This is not, this is just like okay, a real okay. world version of you. But um, I think what is not so good about Wheel of Time is that it's too um, rigidly binary. 
Okay. Um, yeah. I feel like the the whole you know power system. I get what he was trying to do, but um, I feel like it's not really. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm not even saying realistic. I feel like it's not aligned to how people are. You know, so binary. Gotcha. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's a good. That's a good one. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, favorite fantasy author of all time. Mm, I think Brandon Sanderson. Okay. Favorite fantasy character. Overall. Overall. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say Sarini from um, Elantris. Okay. Yeah, we dug that out. I really like her. Yeah. Uh, how about favorite sport? Or are you not a sporter? Um, I I am a sports person. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite sport is um, yoga. I okay. mean, it's not really a sport, but yeah, That's I like favorite. yoga. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you had been born two hundred years ago, okay, what would you have wanted to do as a profession, or been born to into as a way of life? Okay. Well, two hundred since I'm a woman, two hundred years ago, my options would have been limited. Um, but, uh, assuming that 200 years ago, I had the same opportunities as now, um, I would have liked to be an explorer. Gotcha. 200 yeah, years ago, there was still a lot of earth to explore. Yeah. I love it. That's a, that's a great idea. Okay. So how about this one? It's the opposite. I want, if you could be born 200 years from now, what would you hope we would have evolved from and what would you like to be doing 200 years from now? Well, I hope that 200 years from now, we're Star Trek. I mean, <laughs> like, we're in uh, space, yeah. Um, I hope that, you know, we have that sort of mentality of, you know, just being one Earth, one planet, like no nations anymore, all that stuff. And um, sorry, what was the second part of the question? And so then what would you like to be doing then? Oh, um, years from now? I don't know. I mean, if... I would I would kind of like to be an artist and like see what kind of medium, you know, like you have at that point, you know, like if you're making sort of like, I don't know, holographic art or like dream art, can you make art, like can you make dreams for people and then they can go and dream them? Or um, you I know, love that. Oh man, like that. that's yeah. Shoot, now I want to. <laughs> oh, a dream artist, two hundred years yeah. from now. I bet you, you you'll be able to. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, with, if we haven't, you know, killed ourselves in the planet, which is uh, very likely. So. I think we're gonna figure it out. I think we're gonna figure it out. And I want to see this dream art. Uh, man, I, that that has me like because it has a little bit of Teleron Riyadh in it. It has a little bit of. Well, you can actually pronounce it. Like I cannot. <laughs> it's one of my favorite places. So <laughs> that's if you ask me. Yeah, that's my favorite. So yeah, I can pronounce that one now. Kyrian, I could not pronounce very well, but now I can because very that's good. how that's how people are in chat. They help you. Wheel of Time fans help other Wheel of Time fans pronounce things properly. That's how it works. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, those now, are, yeah. Next to uh, Megan, the second color, I now yeah. remember that it's not fail, but fail. Yeah. But see, everyone, everyone gave you grace there. Not so much if you're hosting a show, but everyone gave you grace, which is what they should do. And I appreciate that. All the fans in Thank chat you. that did not mess with that. Yeah, we all knew. Again, it's Wheel of Time. We all knew what you meant. Uh, now, yeah. you said favorite villain. And I have to go back to this one, of course. And thank you for participating in the Portal Zone round. That's a lot of fun for me just to uh, get a feel for your fandom and just kind yeah. of uh, what you like without having to think too much about it. You said favorite villain, Lanfear. We have to talk yeah. because she's mine too. So... <laughs> Uh, what do you, what do you love about Lanfear? Well, okay. So first, I love the fact that she isn't really like. I mean, most of the other Forsaken are still sort of, you know, sort of under the Dark One, and they're still trying to operate within that, you know, that frame of mind. Was yeah. Lanfear is like she's just, you know, she's actually considering eliminating him. She's like, I can yeah. do the whole thing, you know, I can run the show. Um, so I really appreciate her arrogance and like her sort of like her vision for, you know, a world entirely dominated by Lanfear. And, um, so I think, you know, I think like, she's like the ultimate villain in a way, because she's, she's not doing this for anything apart from power. Like she just wants power. Like every other character, every other Forsaken has an ulterior motive, like because they had some sort of grievance with Blue Starin, or, you know, they 
just wanted to play music like Asmodean. Um, but like instead, she's actually just completely power hungry. So I really love that. Yep, I'm loving this. I'm loving this all. Visionary. <laughs> I think that is the name for Lanfear. It's Lanfear slash Visionary. Uh, yeah. That is, I, I absolutely agree. She makes the greatest villain in The Wheel of Time. The and rest also, are just think, lame. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think she's also like really funny in a way, like her sort of like, I mean, I feel like, I don't know if you have seen the Disney movie Hercules. Uh-huh. Like Hades is like is that sort of character is that sort of villain that is like is really evil but also is really funny and I think Lamphier can be that as well because she's like really evil and like serious at times but also she has this sort of like ex girlfriend vibe that is really funny because it, it makes her like a bit hysterical at times like when she goes completely crazy because she thinks that Rand is betting Avienda and she just goes nuts. nuts she's like exploding yeah. um so like it's I, I feel like. Yeah. It's passion. She's a very passionate, visionary yeah. villain. I agree. Exactly. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> so uh, that's so cool that you liked her. By the way, I, I, you said two, 200 years ago, you would have liked to have been an explorer. Then you said in 200 years, you would like us to be in Star Trek. So it sounds to me like you would in 200 years like to be this Star Trek space explorer that while you're traveling between stars is creating dream basically dream art for other people that's, which i think that's, that's a totally I mean, that, that's, that's amazing yeah. that would be amazing yeah i mean oh, and... i, I kind of feel like in in the future they would have sort of like resident artists on spaceships so that people can you know experience art whilst they're traveling you know for like 20 years among the stars so i could be a resident artist and like uh, yeah uh, we they, get to explore they, and also work they should totally have that taylor said when i saw this show up in chat like you're like in an in inception architect Inception yeah, architect. That's the point. That's, yeah, that's exactly that's, it. That's fantastic. I love that idea. Why don't yeah. we, I, I have a couple of other questions for you here. I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. And then we'll kind of, uh, you know, tie up the show here and let you go. But I do want to, let's let's pick our raffle winner here. I think that let's, let's take a little bit of break and let's make that happen. So for the early viewing of Winter Dragon, raffle make sure i'm going to give you another couple minutes to make sure you get an exclamation point raffle you got to put that in chat and you can be part of that so just remember you have just you know you have five more minutes to join that now wheel of time on amazon prime yeah have you been following <laughs> the news on it have you been I, I know twitter time is there but i you know you're off illustrating things have you been watching the news and what are you most excited about everything like I'm, literally, <laughs> like I'm so into it i'm like because i remember when um when i finished uh reading the whole series i immediately went on facebook and tumblr to try and find other people in the fandom and uh, everybody was like oh but they will never make a tv series about this they're they've been talking about it for years but it will never happen and um and then it happened you know like so i'm, I'm excited about everything really i'm like i'm just happy that they're doing it I don't even care. Like, I'm, I just want to see it. Yeah, I think that's that's where I'm at is I, I just want to see it at this point. Do you have any fears about the series? I mean, do you have any fears about what um, you might see? My only fear is that it might not be um, sexy enough for okay. the general public. Like, uh, my only fear is that it might be cut short because there's not enough of a you know of an audience there yeah. because i feel like wheel of time isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea like um you know it's it's more complex than game of thrones and um and also people have now seen game of thrones and like loads of other fantasy so maybe people are a bit you know tired and there's not that much of a new sort of like novelty fac uh, factor so I feel like my only fear is that they will do one season and then it will blow over. So that's my only fear. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to say I'm with you there, which is in the end, I just want all the books. I, I, basically, I, I want to go from the beginning to the end. And I'm okay if it doesn't look exactly like the books in the very end. I just want a full series. I don't yeah. want that uh, feeling of, I, I'm going to watch the first two seasons of The Wheel of Time again, right? Yeah. Imagine just for a moment only knowing that there's a 14-book series, but only being ever to only read, you know, the first three books. You can't yeah. read the rest. You just can read the first. That's how it would feel to me. 
Uh, also, especially if it's really good and then, you know, and then they cut it short because it's not pop enough. And yeah. then you're like, oh, but it was so good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like this thing bothered me, but but I don't care. Change all these other things. Give me more whatever. Yeah. If your favorite was Daniel Henney, give me more Henney on the screen or give me more Rosamund Pike and I don't care what else you change. I think that's going to be a lot of fans' opinions. Is, is there a fa yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Um, yeah, no, because I was thinking about the, the thing you were saying, like how what I'm looking forward to the most. Also, it's definitely like the, I mean, just the cast. I mean, from all of the cast, like all of the actors that have been cast so far, like they, they all seem amazing, like from um, either, you know, stuff that they've done before or even, you know, the way that they behave on, on social media, on Instagram, um, like um, Barney Harris, like um, it's yeah, like... Yeah. He's, he's so great like, he's like honestly he's mad like he he literally is mad so like um which by the way i now like because i before i said you know like first yeah, read through yeah. it wasn't my favorite character but now i you know i've warmed up to him so yeah, i know what? that he's a fan favorite and uh, i do appreciate him especially and i think he, this is like a, a bit of a controversial um sort of opinion, but I actually really like Brandon Sanderson's Matt. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, you've you've taken a lot of stances today. <laughs> it's no, like a lot I'm of like, a lot of Egwene love, Fayil but... love, and Brandon Sanderson's Matt. That's I'm not sure we can find that trifecta out there in fandom too often. So that's really unique. That's uh yeah, I think Barney Harris, I just threw a picture up this week uh, on Instagram. Yeah, uh, I saw someone had said national treasure and I as soon as they said national treasure two weeks on I just saw in my head. I was like, "He's yeah, he's yeah. on that Nicolas Cage poster." Now I have to look. I can get I can get around Photoshop a little bit. I'm not like the most skilled, but I've been using Photoshop for many years. And I was like, I need to be able to put a face on it. And he had done a side profile recently, and I was like, "That's the one." I'm gonna put a side yeah. profile. Yeah. So if you want to see Barney Harris as uh, as Nicolas Cage in National Treasure, go check out our Instagram page. Love, you can you can find that. <laughs> I love the fact that he also like reshared that in his stories. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah. It's funny you can tell the one re that really resonate with him. Where he's like, yeah, I can yeah. totally do that. Like I did a Batman one earlier this week, uh, also, which I you know superimposing him over Robert Pattinson's Batman uh, picture. Which yeah. I think it could work. I know. I saw it when I did it. I was like, oh man. But I want a Batman. I what I realized is I want a Batman with some facial hair. That's what I realized I needed. Um, and there aren't. Batman with facial hair from what I, I don't know. I don't know the comics. Maybe there's a Batman out there that has a beard. I have no idea. Uh, so for those of you that have been waiting around, really appreciate it in chat here. Let's pick a winner for our early viewer. So again, if you've put in exclamation point raffle, the sneak peek is going on tonight here at 7 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully you're available if you win. We might actually pick two as an alternate and then make the alternate really sad. <laughs> because they won't be able to go. But yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll enjoy this. Taylor, go ahead. We don't have drums, you know. Yeah, Taylor's going to give us some drums out there. Go ahead and pick us a winner, Taylor. Uh, and good luck to everybody. Thank you. And it, this is always this weird moment. Roar has won an early viewing of Winter Dragon. So Roar, welcome. Welcome. Congratulations. Uh, make sure you go contact me immediately after this over Discord or Twitter, some way, get a hold of me. We're gonna pick an alternate here just in case Roar doesn't get a hold of me in the next hour. Um, so go ahead, Taylor. The alternate will be uh, this person that will show up here quickly in Zoom in chat. <laughs> oh, Shantani, Shantani, congratulations, has won uh, what may not be an early viewing. You know what I'm saying, Shantani. <laughs> Much love, uh, and if Roar, at this point, Shantani is like, hey, Roar, don't, don't say anything. Don't say anything. I just want to go. <laughs> so Shantani, congratulations for oh, being I the think, alternate. He just replied. Hooray. Oh, did Roar? Oh, yeah. So, so Shantani, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, well, you know, maybe I'll make something work. Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, again, contact me, Roar, on you know, social media after this. Like I said, over on Discord, you can find the link in the description or on Twitter. Just make sure I know because I need to send you an email and give you some instructions. So uh, to finish up our discussion, I did want to ask you uh, about just art in general. Do you have advice for artists out there that they want to be the next Maria Leah Malandrina, <laughs> right? They, they want to they 
they want to whatever be on Instagram and and almost have a hundred thousand uh, followers on Instagram. Congratulations! That's that's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, is there something from a you know advice perspective to them uh, getting into art and how they can of one day maybe illustrate books like you're doing? Um, sure. I mean, there's actually. I mean, it's like it's a really big sort of like topic, but I yeah. guess. Um, the thing that I always say is, you know, you gotta put the hours in. Like, there's no like. I feel like a lot of a lot of things nowadays can be done fast. You know, like you can you can learn it quickly. You can, you know, there's that easy steps, and it's like no, there's no easy steps with drawing. It's like you just have to do it over and over and over again, and then after many 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 hours, you'll become okay. And then, I mean, you'll always have these um sort of um imposter syndrome where you always like look at your own work and you go like oh that's really bad and i don't understand how people can think that that's good because that's really bad but um you know at some point you'll start to develop some you know more objective uh critic eye for your own work and you'll start realizing you know what are the things that you actually need to improve and things that you're okay at and um and from that sort of realization you can then Put more hours in and draw even more and then you know, get more. <laughs> and well, it's like, like it's, it, it's, no, there's, no, there's no easy solution like as you were saying you know like your daughter like drew a million dragons and now she can do it in three hours and that's not you know that's not an easy fix that's just something that she's put a lot of time and effort in and that's why she can now do it and um yeah so i, I guess that's my most honest advice like don't expect your drawings to be good when you start because they won't be and they won't be for many hours and many drawings well yeah and, and like you said it really is one of those just you just got to do it and you got to put it in and yeah. find what you're really passionate about uh, like like you don't like backgrounds right <laughs> and so I, I i i can draw a really good um pine tree that's it because that's the only thing i ever tried to draw really a lot yeah. um that's it. I, I can't draw anything else. I'm terrible. Uh, so I, the, putting, putting the work in, right? It's one of those, yeah. you can't skip this one. Uh, there's no insta fix. And, um, and I think that's also true for um, like social media as well. Like um, I think it, with social media it's difficult because you don't want it. You don't want to put too many hours in because otherwise you go crazy and uh, you start to become completely dependent on um, Instagram likes, which is not good. Um, yeah. So I feel like you need to maintain sort of like very healthy distance from um, from um, overlaying your own identity and your own worth as a person to what sort of um, reception you get online. And that's true for anything online, really, because that's and, and it's especially difficult with something like drawing where your passion is your job and uh, it's difficult to separate yourself from yourself as an artist. Um, I feel like a lot of people have this problem uh, who are sort of like professional artists. Um, you, a lot of people get to a point when they go like, m maybe things slow down, maybe they don't get as much, um, you know, interest in their work. And, you know, you, you just sort of clash because you're like, wow, then nobody cares, I'm not good anymore. And he's like, no, that's not true. Like, <laughs> your yeah. worth as a person is distinct from your worth as an artist, so yeah. And, th and that's uh, that's a really important, especially as it, social media is related to this, right? It's like, yeah. well, I put all this time in, why am I not getting enough likes, you know? And I didn't get as many likes as I, I whatever I got last time. And making sure that you differentiate the passion you have for something versus whatever the world, however the world receives it. Yeah. And also, also because I feel like, um, especially with likes and reception, um, most of it is actually um, like completely coincidental. So like, you know, yeah. sometimes you post something that you feel like, sometimes you post something you spend no time on. Like I, it happens to me all the time that maybe sometimes I just post like a really quick sketch I did um, in between other work and people, you know, like really like it and I get loads of um, good feedback from it. And then I didn't post something that I spent many hours on and uh, I was really proud of it and I don't get that much of a reaction. I'm like, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, what's happening here? And I'm like, well, actually, you know, um, it's because maybe I just posted a different time of the day. And so people are not actually on their phone at that time. So they can't even see the thing that I posted. So, yep. you know, like before you jump to conclusions, you have to, taking consideration the fact that there are algorithms and 
you know, all sorts of stuff that might influence people, um, actual, you know, reach to your material. So, yeah. Yeah. No, this is all good advice and, and definitely love to have you back sometime and just talking about the, you know, the process around art and artwork. Some, you know, I, I have maybe just get a bunch of artists on and we just talk about that. I think to me, that's really yeah. a fascinating topic in and of itself. I mean, the, the Wheel of Time fan, fandom aspect is really cool too, but yeah, there's just that, uh, you know, how much passion you put into something. Uh, you can't correlate that to the reception of the world. Otherwise, you'll just, <laughs> you'll you'll end up in a ball in a corner and then you'll give up because. Yeah. Or uh, you'll just become like a, a people pleaser and just draw like, you know, just anything that people want to see. So, yeah. And that's not really right to yourself as an artist. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's great advice. Really appreciate your opinion about that. I'm glad we took a little, just a moment here at the end and, and chatted about that. And for those of you, again, that have not checked out Maria's stuff, go follow it on Instagram. Go check out her website where she has a lot of the Watt Chibi. I don't think you have all the ones that you did on commission there. I think you just no, have the ones I just that you've have done. the ones yeah. um, like from the actual series. Yeah, you'll have to go follow all the Twitter accounts. Just go look for them. You can look up Watt Chibi there and you can do what Maria does, which is just kind of scroll through the, the Twitter of time accounts and see all the Watt Chibis. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah and, I really appreciate you showing up and being here and just talking all about your fandom and art. This has been a lot of fun for me and hope everyone has been enjoying this. Yeah. And like I said, we'll, we'll definitely have you back again in the future. And one last note, thank you so much for that chibi, the innkeeper chibi. That was, that was a nice, that was a, it was a wonderful way to wake up today and just see that you had sent that. I really appreciate the time you put into that. And, uh, what a way to kind of um, finish the day here. So uh, for those of you that are watching us, remember Watt Wednesday, we will be back. We're going to do this Winter Dragon, the Dusty Wheel Cut. I can't I, I, wait. I, I don't want to tell you anything about it. I just want you to react to it and let's see how that goes. And then that evening, we're going to do our normal live show talking all about September episodes and guests. And we'll actually discuss the cut, the Dusty Wheel Cut 2. So I'll announce the guests we'll have with us Wednesday here over the next couple of days. Thank you all for watching. And if you haven't had a chance, please do like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this weekly live call-in talk show kind of format that we do here at the Dusty Wheel. And with that, uh, good afternoon from the Dusty Wheel. And as we say around here, smash to black. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the Dusty Wheel.